We back. Welcome back. Uh, thank God for uh, all of you that are here. Thank God for your giving. Uh, we appreciate everything. <clears throat> Uh, uh, more importantly, we thank you guys for coming to support us, uh, 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 not just by way of giving only, but by way of hearing uh, uh, the truth of God's word. So we thank God for all of you being here today. Uh, you could have been anywhere else, uh, but you decided to be here with us today. So we thank God for all of you. All right. Uh, now, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. Go back to Galatians 4. Uh, as a matter of fact, stay, we left off in Genesis. All right talking about Galatians 4. So go to Genesis, and I'll just read Galatians 4, uh, because a lot of times when watching the videos, most people don't watch the first session, they'll just come to this one. So we want to make sure they know where we are uh, uh, in this particular video, okay? So now as we, as we go through this, Paul is describing, uh, to, the, to the Galatians here, Paul is describing uh, how that God is going to deal with us based on our faith and not our works, okay? Because having received the grace of God, we receive the grace of God by faith, not any works of the flesh. Paul had taught these Galatians, and now they were so soon removed, all right, from this grace where they stand and the freedom within this grace, they were removed, okay? And so because they were removed <clears throat> by this grace, a, uh, uh, mom, mom, is there another water right there? Because they were so far removed from this grace, okay, Paul was saying that I marvel because having begun in the spirit, you're now made perfect by the flesh, okay? And now he's dealing with this allegory or this uh, metaphor of how the, the Old Testament scriptures, although nobody back here knew or understood the mystery of Christ, he points out how God was always gracious even back here, okay? And so because he was gracious to people under a law, which was a performance-based acceptance system. Thank you. Because God was gracious even to those people back there, surely he's gracious to us in this dispensation of grace, okay? And so all of the scripture uh, points to Christ. No matter where you look at in scripture, all right, the spiritual understanding for it is always to point to Christ. The scriptures before the cross point to the cross, and the scriptures after the cross point back to the cross, okay? All right, and so we talked about it last week, uh, 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 they say, uh, at the cross or by the cross, okay? All right, we weren't saved at the cross, but at the cross is where our sins were paid for. But remember now, it's, it's unto all, but it's not what? Upon all until you what? Believe, okay? So at the cross was where our sins were paid for. But you don't receive the forgiveness of that sins, okay, until you receive the gospel of grace, which is that Jesus Christ died, shed his blood to pay for your sin. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Once you believe that, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and you receive eternal life as a present possession, okay? And so once that happens, <clears throat> now you're saved by way of the cross or the finished work on the cross. You weren't saved at the cross because you weren't there, okay? All right, so, so understand, uh, uh, now Paul is saying in having, be, ha having received this grace, this, this something that you could not do for yourself, I'm going to show you an example how this has always been when it came to God, okay? So he's using Abraham, Sarah, and, 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 and Hagar to show this example, all right? Now, he's talking about two covenants to Jewish people who would have understood what? Covenants, okay? But again, it's an allegory. It's like something or as this, but it's not actually the real what? Thing. It's a, it's a like or as, a metaphor to describe something. It's not to be taken literal. It's to be taken from an allegorical standpoint to get the, work, the, the truth out of it that he's trying to point out. And the truth that he's kind of trying to point out is that we're not children of the bondwoman, but of the free woman. That is the truth that he's trying to point out. Because oftentimes in the flesh, okay, we're sure in the flesh, we do things according to being in bondage. You see that? And so that's how we tend to do things according to the flesh. But Paul is trying to show these Galatians, you don't have to go back into the beggarly elements of the law. You can now be free because Christ has made you what? Free. 
All right, and if we're if Christ has set us free, then we're free what? Indeed. Indeed. Okay. So so when Paul is dealing with Galatians, we're dealing with this allegory of Sarah, Hagar, and 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 uh, 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 Abraham. Abraham being the, the father of us all because he's a man of faith. Sarah being the promise. Okay. All right. Uh, she's a free woman, and Hagar being the representing bondage. Okay. And that's why Paul says even to this day they wrestle and fight with each other. Ishmael, the descendants of Ishmael, the descendants of uh, 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 Isaac, okay, mm -hmm. even to this day, all right, all right, go back to uh, Genesis now, we got the backdrop, and so we're just covering this now, but I want you to see all of these different things, okay, go back to Genesis 21, <laughs> Genesis 21, <laughs> All right, so now, look at verse 3. We left off here, Genesis 21, verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, what? Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had, what? Commanded. When did God command him this? When he made the covenant with him, all thee and thy seed shall be circumcised, for it is a covenant between betwixt me and thee, okay? And so he made this covenant with him that all of the children had to be circumcised, okay? Which again was the cutting off of the flesh, all right? Which is a representation of a setting apart, all right? But now, as we read in Galatians 6, Paul says neither circumcision nor uncircumcision will profit anybody today, which means that the cutting off of any flesh, anything you do of the flesh, does not separate you or sanctify you for God's purpose today. Back here, it did. This is how God would separate the, the people of Israel, okay, from the rest of the world, okay? Because nobody else would have known to circumcise their child the eighth day. Because God only gave his word and his law to who? Yeah. To the nation of Israel, okay? All right, so look at this. Now, drop down here. Uh, we cover. Well, look at verse 5. And Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God had made me to what? Laugh, laugh. laugh so that all that here will laugh what? With me, okay? Because now, remember now, they laughed at the fact that she would be, because again, in her mind, she had done all she could do. She just couldn't have children. She says, God had restrained me. I can't have children. So I'm going to go ahead and let Adam, uh, I mean, let Abraham go ahead and uh, uh, sleep with Hagar to give us, uh, and give us a child. And then immediately she what? Despised the woman. All right, now watch this. Look at verse 7. And she said, who has said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given ch children suck? For I have borne him a son in his what? Old age. Old age. Now watch this now. It consistently talks about their age. Why? Because of the miracle of it. Right. Because of the, watch this now. The example of that is also who? In scripture. Example of what? Of Sarah having this barren child. Mary and Christ. Mary. Huh? Mary and Christ. Mary and Jesus Christ. Right? Because remember now, she had a seed of what? Promise. Mm -hmm. All right? She didn't have a seed from, from, uh, from Joseph, okay? So she had a seed, uh, uh, the seed of God within her to impregnate her or con conceive at that time, okay? The same way with her here. God visited her and did something for her that they could, she could not do for herself. She tried everything she could to bear Abraham a son within her own will, and it did not happen until the appointed time that God wanted it to happen, okay? And so now at this time, look at verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Now look at verse 9. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, what? Mocking. Mocking, okay? Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with who? Isaac. Even with Isaac, okay? Now remember now, in Jewish culture, the heir always went to what? Who, which first, son? Oldest. The oldest son, the firstborn son. So the heirship should have went to who? Uh, Ishmael. Uh, Ishmael. Ishmael. It should have went to Ishmael. But God, watch this now as God points this out. 
All right, it's a vivid picture of how when we do things in the flesh, it does not please God. Okay, and because she did something on her own, that did not please God. God does not recognize what is not his. Okay, watch this. He does not recognize what is not his. Not that he wasn't going to allow anything to happen to Ishmael, because remember, Ishmael was, uh, God says, because I, uh, 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 he, he's going to hearken unto Abraham and also bless Ishmael. Right. He just can't be the seed of promise, because right. that's not what I promise you. Because, because again, God could have said, okay, y'all did this on your own, but I'm going to just turn it all around. I'm going to make Ishmael the seed of promise. He could have done that, okay? But it's the principle of it, okay? A lot of times I tell people, even at my job, okay, uh, uh, I tell you all the time, there are some things that really don't have to be said, okay? But it's the principle a lot of times. Because now, if you allow people to do things, okay, the principle of what they're trying to do will carry over to something else. Mm -hmm. Because it's not that big of a deal, but it's the principle of what you're saying that I need to speak up about, okay? So now, it's the principle of what God is doing. He has a plan and a purpose, okay? Because again, the same way she conceived, Okay, by God doing something was the same way that her seed of promise is equivalent to this seed of promise. It's a shadow of things to come. All right, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm just speculating on, uh -huh. on God wanting to keep that in that bloodline mm -hmm. between Abraham and Sarah. Absolutely, that's exactly why He wanted to do that. Okay, because again, everything with God is according to order and time. You see that in the perfect order would have been because of her, because she was what? Barren. Okay? So that was that was the whole thing. Excuse me, the same way with uh, uh, Mary and Jesus Christ. All right? And I just want to say, uh, he also, uh, I, I mean, I, I keep calling him Isaac. Uh, it's Ishmael it's was uh -huh. also circumcised. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Circumcised and given a blessing. Absolutely. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It's, it's the so same way with Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother, but God told him, sent them away, but put a mark on him so that you couldn't do nothing to him. You see that God, even God is gracious now, because remember now, according to God and Noah, all right, uh, 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 when you get to Noah, the uh, human government now exists. If you kill a man, your blood is to be is to be uh, held accountable for that person you kill. Capital punishment. Okay, that's what God instilled when you get to Noah. Okay, so but watch this. God should have killed Cain. Okay, because he killed his brother, and he says when he asked him, "Where is that brother?" The first lie ever told, okay, in the scripture. What did he say? Am I my brother's keeper? What are you asking me for? You know? And, and, and so now he says, but your, his, his blood crying out to me. Watch this now. The blood of his brother crying out to God. Another allegory of the blood of Christ. Everything you see in your Bible, and now that you know the mystery, you study your Bible going backwards, and now you see all of the things that are like the mystery. Neither, nobody back here knew anything about the mystery of Christ, but God knew. Now Paul is able to use these as examples of how we receive grace without works today. The same way God blessed them in this aspect here. Okay? Look at this. Look at verse, uh, verse 12, Genesis 21. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah had said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy what? See thee called. Shall thy see be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy what? See. God still made him a nation of people because he still is the physical seed of what? Of Abraham. Amen. And Abraham was to be the father of what? Many, Many nations. nations. See, God has a perfect plan if you just trust it. Yeah. He has a perfect plan if you just trust it. Because now it's easy to see the plan when you have all the pieces. Mm -hmm. You see that? If you, if, 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 and I always liken things to a puzzle, okay? Because I used to love to put together puzzles, okay? All right. Now, when you look at puzzle pieces, right, you, and you get that little, you know, you start with the little corner pieces, you get that little corner, mm -hmm. and then it's like, man, I, wonder, I can't wait to see what it's going to look like when we have it all together. You know? See, when you start, let me, let me teach y'all a little bit just by puzzle, by puzzle putting together, okay, one-on-one, -on -one, all right? You take the end pieces because those are the easier ones to match up. Starting in the middle, you're all over the place, okay? So that, that's, 
just, just, just keep that in the back of your mind, right? All right, so, so, so once you get the end pieces of it, now you can see a little bit of what you have. But once you put it all together, you think back to when you first started to put that puzzle together. And now when you put it together, it's like a map, like, man, this is beautiful. It's the same way when you understand the word of God. When you have the whole totality of what God is doing, we study Paul's epistles because that's doctrine for us today. However, we also study the other parts of the Bible because it enhances our knowledge of who God is Amen. and what he's doing today. Now that I know the whole plan, okay, right, now I can, it's, I can better uh, uh, serve God now because I know the whole plan. Yeah. Right? That's why Paul says, uh, for, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, we know in part, so we prophesy in part. Mm -hmm. But when that which is perfect is fully come, which yeah. is the word of God, now we can know it all. Yeah. You see that? And so that's what he's doing here. But notice that he's still able to bless Ishmael and make him a nation because he's God. God can take the things that are unwanted and still bless it. Yes. That's an example of all of us in here. Amen. You see that? So because we were enemies to God, but he still did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. All right? Go back to, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, let's, let's, let's go here. Let's go to, keep going to Genesis and go to, go to 32. Genesis 32? Chapter yes, yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, scratch that. Let's go to, uh, go to, <laughs> because I, yeah, I want to say something else first. Go to Romans 9. Go to Romans 9. Let's go here first. That was my question, too. What's that? Esau versus Jacob in the same way. Uh, yep, you yep. right to it. Right, right. That, that's what I was going to go to, but I'm going to say it from this perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Romans chapter 9 here. All right, look at Romans chapter 9, all right? Now, now, so God promised them a promise, Abraham and Sarah, and the promise was to be through Sarah's seed, which is Isaac, and not Hagar's seed, which is Ishmael, all right? Then the promise continues to go on. When you read through Genesis, it continues, and when Isaac uh, bore, who did Isaac, Isaac have? Jacob. And who? Esau. Esau. Jacob and Esau, right? Now, watch this. If you notice, did Abraham have other kids? Yes. yes. You sure? Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure you're sure. All right, so, so, so now, so, so, so now, Abraham had more children, but who does the Bible speak mostly about? Jacob and Esau. Huh? No, no, Abraham now. Isaac and who? No, no, Isaac and... Hold on, let's, let's call over. Let's call over. Let's call over. Let's call over. Okay, Abraham had the two kids. Which are who? It's been Isaac. Although he had more children... The Bible specifically speaks about Abraham and who? Ishmael. I mean, uh, uh, Isaac. Y'all got you confused. <laughs> Ishmael. <laughs> it's Ishmael and, I, and, and Isaac, okay? And, and uh, Isaac, okay? So now, when you get to the promise still going on, now Ishmael has what two sons? Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. It's always about two. Why is that? Two choices. Two witnesses. Huh? Faith and freedom? I mean, I mean. Um, law is grace. Grace. Law grace. Uh, watch this. God always works now, okay, all throughout your Bible. You're either Jew or Gentile. Choice. Law okay. and grace. Mm. Mystery, prophecy. Mm. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, okay? Mm. So everything is done in that choose, okay? So watch this. So now you get down to Jacob and Esau. All right, look at this. Look at Romans chapter 9. Look at Isaac. Right, look at chapter 9, okay? Because Isaac was the son of promise, all right? But look at chapter 9. Uh, let's start at verse 11. Uh, no, let's start at verse 8. Romans 9, look at verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the what? Children of God. These are not the children of God, okay? But the children of the promise are counted for the what? Seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come. Again, a time word, okay? And Sarah shall have a son, and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. 
For the children being not yet born, neither having done any what? Good or evil. That the, oh man, this verse here says so much. That the what? Purpose the of purpose of God, according to election, might what? Stand. Not of works, but of him that what? Call. Call it. All right, now, there's a lot in this, but let me watch this, okay? Now, the children had not done anything, but yet God still what? Chose. All right, watch this now. All of this is going to tie in to what Paul is talking about, about grace, but the bond woman of free, and one of bondage and law. Watch this. All right, so now, none of the children had done anything to be. So now, when you do things from a, a, a standpoint of picking people, all right, you pick the one that's, you know, I guess, uh, you think. let me see. I don't want to say that. Okay. Let me see this. Okay, so when you're, when you're trying to make a decision, let's say you have a business and you're trying to hire somebody. Both resumes are exactly the same. How do you choose? What do you, at what, what do you go by? Experience. Feel good. Both experience, everything is the same. You have the opportunity to interview both individuals. How do you make a choice? What would you go by? First impression. Huh? First impression. First impression? The way you feel about that. Right. The way you feel. Based on how they what? Perform. Present themselves, okay? We judge people according to how they present themselves, and then we make a what? Choice. God made a choice before either child was able to what? Present himself. They had done no good and no evil, neither one. They had the same resumes, but yet God what? Chose. Okay, watch this. Now, this is the ability of God to know the, see the end before the, beginning. before the beginning. That's why he's Alpha and Omega. Okay, watch this. So now, as it comes, okay, now it, he did this, why? For his what? Purpose. purpose. Okay, God always has a purpose and plan. Okay, it behooves us to know his purpose and plan and not our own, okay? He had a purpose and plan to choose, okay? Why? So that the purpose of God according to what? Election. Now, this is where Calvinists come in now. Mm -hmm. Calvinists believe that we were predestined and some were elected for heaven and some were elected for hell. This is what the Calvinists believe, okay? Now, watch this. And I challenge you to find this in your Bible and your studying. At what point was an election talking about an individual salvation? In the Bible. You'll never find it. The election always did this mentioned four times in Scripture. One of it being Christ and the other three times is Israel. It's always according to a plan and purpose of God, not to individual salvation. So God did not individually appoint people to be saved and some people to not be saved. Because then that would take away your freedom of choice just as God had freedom of choice, okay? So God is not going to take away his, your sovereign ability to choose because then that would mean that there's no point in coming to church, there's no point of even living because I know I'm going to heaven already and this person know they're going to hell, right? God always allows for the possibility to choose him. You see that? Even in the with, uh, 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 in the beginning, and we talked about this before, God created g good and evil. God created good. He allowed for the absence of good, which we call what? Evil. evil. He didn't create that. He created good, okay? But he had to allow for the absence of good so that you can make a what? Choice. Choice. That's why he told Cain, if you do right, if you, do, do, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, sin what? Lying at the door, which means you have a choice to do the right thing, right? Now, our choices should be enhanced because we have the what? Spirit of God living what? In us, okay? So our choices should be enhanced. But notice that the election was not of what? Works, but it was of him that what? Calling. all right? So now, God called for Sarah and Abraham to have a child even though she was barren. All right, she had Isaac, which was the seed of promise, and then she had Jacob and Esau. Esau sold his birthright, okay? Now watch this. And both references, the oldest son who should have got the inheritance didn't. Right. You see that? And God always chooses, right? Most people think that we're not qualified for God to do anything for us. 
But God does not call those who are qualified. He qualifies them who he calls Amen. for his purpose. Amen. You see that? He does not choose you because you were so great. He didn't choose Jacob. He didn't choose Israel. He didn't choose them because they were so great. He chose them because he had a purpose. Right. You see that? That's, that's, the only, that's the only reason. They were no different than anybody else, just like you. Because we know God, because we know Christ, because we know how to study his word, which is rightly dividing it, it does not make you better than somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? It means that there should, a light should come on and say, well, shoot, as bad as I am, mm -hmm. you see that? Don't think that you're better because you know God. You think that this is, has to be the grace of God Amen. because I know who I am. Amen. Even when nobody's looking. Amen. You see that? I was talking to my wife uh, uh, yesterday. We were driving somewhere and uh, and she was saying, well, yeah, you should do it. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about. And she said, well, you should go ahead and do it. Anybody looking? I said, see, that's what she <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so that, that was a teaching moment. That was a teaching moment. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know. It was like, oh, uh, it was a, oh, uh, yeah, we were going to the car wash, and when it, 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 like, you couldn't, it, it was a space there, I could have just went through there, but it was for the other turning lane. And she said, what, well, nobody looking, you just right there. And, 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 Always nobody looking, I can tell you that. Right, right, right. And, 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 just, and, and the sad part about it is uh, when she when she did, I almost like these men in scripture hearken unto her voice. Okay? Uh, so because it was really easy to just shoot through there real quick, you know, because because and, and, and it was just that suggestion, like I always because as soon as she suggested it, I looked. You know, it may not be no, but 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 but, but the U-turn was just so close. I did. Let me just go ahead and take the U-turn, and then I said, see, that's what it's all about integrity. Just because no nobody's looking, you know, not, and she didn't know I was really thinking the same thing, uh, but, 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 but understand that, what, what, understand it's all about the choices that we make, and God allows for us to have that choice, we know good from evil, right from wrong, but we still have to make the conscious effort to make a what, choice, okay, so now, you said, honey, your pastor says, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, your pastor says now, don't, yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, so, so, now, so now we see this issue of Jacob and Esau, all right? Esau giving away his birthright and Jacob becoming the seed of promise. All the way down so much so that through Israel, Jacob's seed is the son of God, is the son of God come. Okay, so now Jesus Christ comes through Israel, Right? And all of this was according to what? Promise. Promise. Now, everybody in here working to accept God under the law, God never intended for that. He only provided that because of their what? Transgression. He always intended for man to believe his word by pure what? Faith. But because they thought they were so good, just like many people today, God says, you know what? I'm going to give you something to show you that you need me. You see that? I'm going to show you how bad you are because I'm going to give you my perfect law to which you cannot keep. Right. Have it in mind because he has a what? A plan and a what? Purpose. So have it in mind that I know you can't do it, although you think you can. I'm God, and I know the end from the beginning. So now I'm going to do something for you, even though you don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to do something for you because I know you can't do it for yourself. But I'm doing it in hopes, because some, some people say, like Paul said in Galatians 3.19, wherefore then serve the law. It was only added because of transgression to show you that you're a sinner in need of a savior, okay? So now once that happens, okay, I see you don't Now once that happens, now because of that, all right, now God is going to show us an example through Paul to show the difference between law and what? Grace, right? I've always been this gracious, but you just didn't know about it yet because I hid it within myself. So now I'm going to point it out to you because now the mystery dispensation has been manifested. So now I'm going to point out to you how even during this time I was gracious and now you receive that same promise because at the time of appointed, I sent for somebody who could keep the law perfectly, who could meet my standard of justice and righteousness in order to provide something for you that you could not do yourself. Amen. And it's an example of Isaac all right, and also Jacob. 
All right, and it's an example of Abraham and Sarah. Because of Abraham's faith, I'm going to give him a promise, okay? When did God promise them this child? Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> huh? Genesis. Genesis. But watch it. In Genesis 12 was when God says, leave your kindred and your family and do what? And go out, okay? So now, and what did he do? He went. Because of that initial faith, just think about how hard that is now. All right, some of us can't even leave our family for a day, okay? So just thinking about him having to leave his family because God told him to do so. That's faith. He just believed God in his word. And because of his faith, God blessed him with a promise that we now receive a part of that promise. You see that? Because he had a plan and a what? Purpose. You see that? He had a plan and a purpose, okay? When dealing with that, when I was playing ball, I got a, I got the chance. I played corner. I got the chance to work out with Primetime, Deion Sanders. Uh, uh, yeah, he's just as funny in person as he is on TV. Okay, <laughs> but 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 I got a chance to work out with him. And one thing that he said as a corner, he said we're at a disadvantage because every play the offense knows exactly what play they're going to run. We don't know. So he said whenever you come before every play, you ought to have a plan and a purpose before every play. And that always stuck with me because no matter what happens during the play, I always have a plan for what I want to do because I don't know what they're going to do. But I always have to have a plan. The same way with God. No matter what goes on around you, God already had a plan in place and a purpose for our life. right? And Paul is showing us in Galatians how that even back with Abraham, he had faith. Sarah was a free woman. Hagar was a bondwoman. All of these were examples of the plan that I had in part. Right. All for you today, which is what we call a what? A mystery. All right. Um, Pastor, can you just explain a little bit about him knowing the end from the, be end from the <laughs> beginning? And um, and for the rest of Revelation? I, the aspect, progressive Revelation? Right, absolutely. Because remember now, God revealed the... And, and, and just take, Abraham knew a little bit more than Adam, all right? David knew more than Abraham. Peter and the apostles knew more than the rest of them. Paul knew more than all of them, and Paul was the last one to pen an epistle, all right? He wrote the last book of the Bible. It's canonized as Revelation, but Paul's Second Timothy is the last book that was written, okay? And so because of that, you have progressive revelation. The problem is people read what we have today, Right? And anticipate revelation, which means that they knew this too. The people back here had no clue about Christ and God delivering them, right, and giving them what he promised them by way of Jesus Christ some 4,000 years later. They didn't know that. You see that? That's progressive revelation, okay? Most people say that, oh, they knew about Jesus Christ. How? Huh. How would they have known back here about Jesus Christ? They knew of the promise of a redeemer. They didn't know about Jesus Christ coming to die a shameful death on the cross. They didn't know about that. You see that? But God in his mind knew. And that's why Romans 3.26, what he did here was a forbearance for all this stuff back here. Because he already knew that. You see that? He already knew that. Go back to Romans 4. Uh, Galatians 4. My mind went to uh, the Gentile on the wall. Uh-huh. Not even known to the Jews, uh -huh. yeah, her actions caused her to be in the bloodline. Mm -hmm. With uh, uh, the spies. Ruth. Ruth, Ruth. yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, and, and again, what was, what was Ruth's biggest deal as far as why she was in the bloodline of the seed of, of, of Jesus Christ? Okay. Being a Moabite woman. Her, her biggest deal? What was her, what, yeah, what was... What was the defining moment, I guess, in scripture about Ruth? I guess when she married? Huh? When she married? Oh, yeah, but well, she married rich now, yeah. That's the end result. Yeah, that's, yeah. she married Boaz. Yeah, that's, yeah. See, see, yeah. See, see, you, see, see, if you do what God said. No, I'm just kidding. Staying with her mother-in-law? Right, she stayed with Naomi. Now, who is Naomi? Her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law, but what was her, what was her bloodline? It was Jew. Remember the Abrahamic covenant if you... Bless Israel, whoever blesses you, I'll bless them. If you curse them. So even though, watch this now, look at the bond here now. This is not her own mother, biologically. This is her husband's mother. Her, hus her mother had just lost her husband and her son. And yet this woman says, wherever thou go, I will go. 
You see that? So because she was so uh, 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 headstrong and violent about helping her mother-in-law, which is blessing Israel at the time, okay? Now, mind you now, she lost her husband, but was willing to stay there because now, to her, that was her family. Because she could have went on and remarried. She could have went anything else. And because of her persistence and her faith, God blessed her with Boaz. And her love. And her love for her mother-in-law. So understand now, that's why when you get to the scripture, and Jesus says, I will our mother-in-law will be against daughter. That's why he says that. Because at a time when they should have stuck together, and when she did, right, there will come a time where now God, everything is going to be torn apart because of this tribulation. Well, mother and be against daughters, fathers will be against sons, and all those types of things, okay? But because of that, which is a good point, she was in the bloodline of Jesus because God blessed her because of what she did for Naomi. Mm -hmm. Even being hurt herself. Mm -hmm. And she was able to provide comfort for her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? So understand now, a lot of times it's not about how you feel. It's about God, okay? And so when you have a love for God, it, it transcends or exceeds how you what, or should exceed how you what, feel. Because a lot of times we don't always feel, right, in the right space to give somebody the word, okay? We don't always feel like that, okay? Uh-huh. But still, it goes back to, like I say, the woman on the wall when the spies came and she hit them. The first thing she said was, I knew. Right now, that was that was uh, 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 not that uh, uh, Rahab. 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 I knew of your God before right time, which right. means that she never studied. Right, never was a she saw it. Right, she heard. yeah, she, she just heard. heard. Right. So she and she back. believed, believed, and she was blessed because of it. That was according to the Abrahamic covenant. Okay, so now God blesses us not according to any covenants of promise, but He blesses us by pure what grace, which was a mystery. He was even gracious to all these people because she should have died. She should have. She should have died. So God, so everything, and, and remember now, let's get the context of Galatians 4. Paul is talking to people who would have known the law, yep. who were now saved by grace, trying to go back under the law. Mm. Paul is going to give them a perfect example of God's grace, even way before the law, mm. to show them that we're not in bondage of the law, but we're free by what? Grace. grace. Amen. That's what he's showing them. You see that? Go to Romans 3, and we'll finish up here. Paul used this specific allegory to show the father of faith, the mother, all right, which is Sarah, the free woman, and Hagar, the bond woman, to give you an allegory. Although neither of these people were under the law, it's an allegory of how the law works. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah tried to do something in her flesh, and had Ishmael, whom God also blessed and made him a nation because he's still the seed of who? Abraham. You see that? And so now, now Sarah, the free woman who God had told the promise was going to be through, he gives her seed and makes her seed to bring through the bloodline of Christ. Right? And so now Paul, is when he says in Galatians 4 verse 19, uh, 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 verse 21, he says, do you desire to be under the law? Do you hear the law? Mm -hmm. All right, I don't think you really hear. Let me give you this example of it. And then he gives an allegory to show the law and grace. That's two. The one of the women were in bondage. She literally, even if she didn't want to, she had to because she was a bond woman to Sarah and Abraham. You see that? She she had a child out of mis, out of uh, uh, obligation. You see that? Out of obligation, she had to do that. That's the law. You they had to perform that law. But Sarah had one out of freedom. You see that? by what God had done because she couldn't do it for herself. Your life is one of freedom because God has done something for those of us who are saved that you could not do for yourself. Amen. That's why the life that we now live in the flesh, we ought to live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. Not selfishly unto ourselves, we ought to live for the one who died to save us. Amen. That's grace. Amen. Right? Look at Romans 3 and 21, we'll end here. This is a great picture of faith and grace without any works of their own. Amen. Sarah couldn't do it. Abraham couldn't do it. Hagar definitely couldn't do it. But God had to do it in his own what? In his own time. In his own time. All right? Look at Romans 3. Uh, uh, look at verse 19, uh, 21. But now. 
But now, here we go. But now, all right. But now the righteousness of what? Of God without the law is what? Manifest. What does manifest mean? Made known. Made known. Remember now, Paul says these things were not made known unto man. All right? Look at this. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the what? Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of, not in, but faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that what? Believe. For there is no what? Difference. For there is no difference, okay? So now, everything that Paul says in Romans 15 and 4, the things that were written aforetime were written for our what? Learning. Learning. And that's exactly what Paul did, and that's exactly what we did, was learn now, because if you just read that scripture from Genesis without having read Paul, you wouldn't understand that. Because it was a what? Mystery. That's just now being manifested through Paul. You see that? So now what we do is we study Paul because this is the doctrine for us today, and then we study all the other parts of the Bible based on the revelation of the mystery. Amen. That's how we study God's word, okay? Because it's a dangerous thing to preach the right word of God and the wrong dispensation. The, is this word of God, of God still true? Yes. yes. The right word of God. But to preach it today makes you disobedient. Mm -hmm. That's not what God is doing today. That's why we have to rightly divide the word of truth. We have to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Uh, uh, go, Galatians 4. Romans eight. I should go to the first verse of chapter five. Yeah, that's what we read now. Yeah, ended up yeah, because yeah. My, my, my Bible is it starts with the application of the allegory for chapter five. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's what it says in there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's uh, you have the uh, Schofield, huh? No, I is it? But it's, it's similar. Because that says that in mind too, yeah, under, at the top there. Yeah. So watch this. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew nothing about the gospel of Christ. Uh, yet and still Paul can use them as an example of God's grace. Amen. He's always been gracious, but he has not dispensed as a means of obedience until this dispensation. Okay? Look at verse 1. We, so we, we cover chapter 4 there. Now look at verse 1. First two words says what? Uh, chapter Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand, stand, stand what? Fast. fast. Okay, what does that mean? Hold on. Hold on. Don't move. All right, don't move. All right, Paul says be un unmovable, okay? Stand fast where? Therefore, all right, now, therefore means what? What were we just talking about? Because. Huh? because of, okay, the fact that we are not, verse 31 of Galatians 4, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free, stand fast, therefore, because of that fact, mm -hmm. all right, in the what? Liberty, wherewith Christ hath made you what? Made us what? Free. Free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of what? Bondage. Why bother to put yourself back under weak and beggarly elements that don't do anything but, dece but deceive and show how much of a sinner you are? Mm. Why put yourself back under that? Right? And, and, and sometimes it can be very difficult, okay? My children get this homework, okay? Uh, uh, that's, that's a little difficult now. I'll be honest with you. Now, I have a degree in everything, but this, this fourth grade work now, sometimes it, it can be a little difficult now, okay? So 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 you don't want to put yourself, okay, because that, that's, a, that's an embarrassment, shame, okay? You don't want to put yourself, okay, back under that type. Why put yourself back into fourth grade when you don't have to be? <laughs> you see, why, why, why do that, okay? So, so, so understand what Paul is saying here. Why put yourself back under this bondage when you don't have to be? When you're free and able to move and understand that I have my being because of who I am in Christ, that provides me with a freedom of life. It provides me with life and peace in spite of what may go on around me, okay? Because we all are governed to tribulations, Okay, we all have to are subject to tribulations, especially those of us who live godly in Christ Jesus. We shall suffer what persecution. You see that? Look at this. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall do what? Still dealing with the audience that are trying to be circumcised and do things according to their flesh in order to please God. Christ does not profit you anything trying to perform in your flesh. Did it, did it profit Sarah anything? 
No. Absolutely not. She tried and tried. It didn't profit her anything until God said do. You see that? Uh, yes. Pastor, in defense of um, these Galatians, uh -huh. they didn't have the written word. They only had this letter that Paul had. I wouldn't written. say in defense. Amen. I wouldn't well, say well, in maybe, defense. Okay, defense may be a poor choice. Of yeah, I, I wouldn't say defense there because that's the excuse that everybody yeah, uses. Excuse. Because yeah. most people say, oh, if I would have walked with him back then, I would have definitely been doing the right thing. You would have been doing the same thing you're doing now. If not worse, because you didn't have a written Bible. Yeah, so okay, there so you are now. Right. <laughs> right. So, so I, 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 I wouldn't say, because they were not at a disadvantage necessarily, Okay, which is the word choice that you use. What I would say, not in their defense, what I would say is because of their humanity, okay, because we all have a proclivity to sin, okay, we all have the, uh, because sin dwells in the flesh, we all have the uh, uh, natural want to, to sin. Okay, that's what we have. So, uh, as it and pertains, I'm, and I'm thinking about their their environment, and, right? And that's because what their environment right. was full of Judaizers, right? Was right. Practicing the law, right? So it was just a few of them amongst the many, right? Right. And and that's what I say. Okay. And the environment. Watch this now. Most people think that you have to be moved from an environment in order to seek true change. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's not true. That's that's true of what they say, Same. but that's not true in understanding, mm -hmm. okay? Because you don't have to change locations to change mentality. That's true. You see that you can be a changed person even in the midst of a bad situation because your mentality has changed. When it came to the Galatians, although they were amongst Judaizers, they had the word of God in them because Paul, they had this letter. They didn't have the whole Bible, but they had this particular letter. And Paul's letters were in circulation at the time, and Paul had actually spoke with them, and whom they believed him to be an apostle. So again, now, the apostle's word was just as relevant as the word of God. So if the apostle said it, that's why Paul had to come with signs and wonders, because he had to show the signs of an apostle so that the Jews would believe that he was sent from God. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was, that was a very big thing. Mm -hmm. And because they knew he was sent from God, that's why he's able to say, foolish Galatians, how are you so so removed? Mm -hmm. So it was not in their defense, okay? Yeah, they didn't have All right. excuses. It, right, they didn't have an excuse, because at the time they had, not only did they have the apostle, they had his letters also. You see that? And so there was no excuse today, all right? Just like people say, but today, you know, we, we want somebody to stand here and speak to us as an apostle. Or we don't need that. We have the completed word. Well, they didn't have Romans then. <laughs> because they didn't read Romans 8 and 1 and 2. Yeah. It would yeah. answer both of those questions. Right. And at that time, they didn't have they Romans. They did right. have it. Paul had not penned yeah, it. Yeah, had that one. Right. Absolutely. That's probably right. Well, they have Romans today. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. have Romans. Yeah. We have Romans today. And okay. people are still well, acting. And they, still they, still and they call that the uh, Gnosticism, okay, yeah. which is what the Galatians suffer from. And some people still do it even today. Uh -huh. Just going back to what we were speaking about, like, you know, they did in the spy. Uh, that also um, exemplifies God's grace and peace. It's mm -hmm. still a war. Right, right, you know, right. As Paul said, grace and peace. Right. So, because she believed that she was doing the right thing, he spared her. And now she didn't have to go to war. Right, right. She had peace with God. Right, right. And, and, and you know, that's a good example. And then and again, as you study the Bible now, and you've always studied it differently, but now you really study it differently. Because everything has a, is an allegory to show forth of what God is doing. It's a wonderful thing to know what God is doing Amen. and not Amen. be so confused. Just think about before when you went to church when you were lost and stuck in denomination of religion, you went to church for that Sunday. Not so much for the word in its totality. When you come to church, you want the word in its totality, okay? And when you don't seek that, you don't really get it. And because of that, because you think you're okay just by going. But when you come, you ought to learn something. Because the more I know, the more God works in me. You see that? Because God is not going to force himself upon you. But the more God, the more you know. That's why Paul says, I count everything that I have, everything that I know, but dumb, mm -hmm. but the knowledge of the excellency of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what it's because now if I have a changed mind in the mind of Christ, regardless of my location, okay, I'm being led by the Spirit as opposed to the what? Flesh. 
flesh. All right? Yeah, we have to stand fast in that liberty and don't allow ourselves or even somebody else to put us back in bondage. Amen. This life is, is, is a great life that we live in Christ. Amen. I'm not going to allow me personally, anybody, to put me back under bondage of something to try to perform to please God. Amen. You see that? Amen. Uh-huh. First, I had a quick question. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you talk about, when you talk about um, Paul um, revealing the mystery to Peter, uh huh. In Galatians, um, did Peter write his book? Peter, Paul, history, first, um, first Peter, second Peter. He wrote that before that intervention when he met Paul. No, no, because he no. didn't understand. You know, I was reading that verse. It says that um, that some of his uh, his were hard, hard to be understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't know he didn't know the revelation of the mystery, right? At that point. Right, well, at what point? At that point, when he made that comment in his book, no, 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 no really, really. huh? That's why. He That's made. why he made it because of. The revelation. All right? Because remember, Peter didn't necessarily pen his epistles because once they made that agreement, right. now Peter had to go ahead and do everything he needed to do for the circumcision. Now that he had that knowledge, now he could say, This is why it's hard to be understood because they were asking him, Well, where's this coming kingdom? You told us to sell all we had as a kingdom, and the only explanation he could give, which is the knowledge that he knew, which is that you got to, Paul tells you why. Uh, that he has not come yet. Yeah, yeah. So Good question. You at your own peril. Right, right, right. right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's why Peter, the only thing he can say is God is not slack concerning his promise, which he isn't. Okay, but really that was his only line to say anyway. Because he, he, did, he didn't know that they were all assuming or thought that he was supposed to come back, which he was. But he opened up this mystery dispensation. Yeah. yeah. All right, good question. Uh, nothing else? Comments, questions, observations? All right. Thank God for all of our visitors. Thank God for all of our visitors that are here with us today. Uh, we have a, 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 a very special gentleman because his name is Kevin. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he has a good name. Okay. So, uh, uh, but no. But again, we thank all of you all for coming out to be with us today. Uh, uh, our family back here. We thank God for you uh, and all of you that came out today. Brother Tim, we thank God for you for Amen. coming back to be with us. Amen. All right. And then we got uh, 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 Brother Freddie and his, his wife and kids are back. Yeah. They're back with us. So, so again, we thank God for all of you. Uh, my brother Sheaf and his family are back with us. I always tell you, and I've been talking to them, and I always tell them how you all ask about them, because I want people to know that when they're not here, we, we do you do ask about them. Uh, so a lot of times people are like, hey, did you talk to such and such? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I told them. And so I, I want you to know that, you know, that when you are here, you're missed, okay? Uh, uh, now, don't feel obligated now, but I'm not trying to put you under the law to come, okay? Uh, but we, but we, do, we do appreciate when we're all here because we're all learning and working together. So I thank God for all of you that came out this morning to be with us. Uh, and I thank you for bearing with me here for a couple of uh, minutes over. All right, uh, and again, it's your fault. Whenever we stay late, it's your fault. Okay? All right, so, uh, but again, thank God for all of you. Nothing else, any comments, questions, observations? Uh, oh, also, just the announcement, my mother, for the Friends and Family Day, uh, which is November 4th, she's reserved a, uh, a, a reservation for Golden Corral. Because I know we have people coming from out of town that are going to come for our friends and family day. So she's reserved a spot at Golden Corral so we can all go out and fellowship uh, and eat, you know, and, you know, talk and do those things on November 4th after the friends and family day. Down okay? on 50, down the street. Uh, we haven't got the address yet. Yeah, just yeah, yeah we get the brand. Yeah, but 56 may be shop. easy because yeah, it's a straight it's shop. It's right yeah, 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 yeah. We normally, we normally always go to the yeah. one in Brandon, but the food is it's to the camera. <laughs> well, hope, hopefully, yes. yeah, we'll yeah, pray yeah. over it. Hopefully, all wherever we go, it's going to be good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, but yeah, we'll, we'll give you the address when, and we really we don't need to know the address until the day of anyway. So, but I just wanted to mention that for the people that are coming out from out of town, there's a couple people, quite a few that are coming from out of town to join us on their friends and family day, and so we'll be going out to eat so we can fellowship with them. Okay. All right. Uh, nothing else. 
All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this day uh, yes. that we're able to come together and study your word, Father God. We thank you for the knowledge of your word. Uh, we thank you for Christ dying on the cross by our sins, uh, that we may have eternal life as a present possession. Uh, Father God, we ask now that you help us not to seek those things which are on the earth, but seek those things which are above. Uh, Father God, help us to behave ourselves in a manner by which we're already seated in heavenly places. Uh, Father God, we thank you for all spiritual blessings that you've given us, uh, Father God, in Christ Jesus. We thank you for making us accepted in the beloved, Father God, having loved us first. Uh, we thank you for that now. We ask now that you continue to strengthen us and be with us as we journey. And as we walk this walk, give us a door of opportunity that we may utter the mystery of Christ, that men may be saved, which is your will. Amen. And Father God, we ask now that you help us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, uh, but help us to humble ourselves, considering oneself. Uh, help us to be gentle, apt to teach, Father God. Uh, and perhaps you would grant uh, the repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Uh, so in Jesus' name we pray. Touch those who are sick. Touch those who are dealing with uh, issues and uh, uh, babies, Father God. We, we thank you for all. And we ask that you touch them and strengthen all, Father God. And strengthen them, uh, especially those, as Paul says, of the household of faith. We pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen.